What's up, Lonnie? So just wondered how this process came about for you. You know, at what point did you think the Lakers might be a fit? Uh, how did those conversations go? And how do you see what your skill set is on both sides of the ball is fitting into what they have? You know, when I was I was out here working out, just trying to figure out what's next and, and what to do. And um, I seen that, you know, DeJounte was about to leave to the Hawks and whatnot. And um, I know that they're about to be in the process of rebuilding and doing things of that nature. So, um, you know, Luke and my, you know, we, we, we came to an agreement of what's next, what we're doing, um, so on and so forth. And the Lakers gave us the call. And, you know, I'm just here ready for the opportunity. How do you see your skill set fitting in the both sides? Um, I see my skill set fitting perfectly. I mean, I'm here to do whatever I need need to do in order for the team to win. Um, and that's for the most part, I'm coming here to play defense, you know, um, play the best I can, play the hardest I can, um, and let the game speak for itself. Um, you know, offensively, you know, I know I can provide for a lot, you know, and defensively, I'm just here to do what I do. You know, whoever you want me to guard, um, whenever there's time for me to, you know, make some stops, you know, that's what I'm here for. Um, Lonnie, the, the last couple of years, um, you know, the, the Spurs have kind of been in that middle of the league and, and um, kind of fighting for around the edge of the playoffs. Mm -hmm. This team, obviously, every time you come on a team with LeBron, there's high expectations. What what does that gear shift feel like in the last week where you're sort of starting to envision how you make this team a contender? Um, well, you know, it's not about how I'm going to make this team be a contender. You know, uh, this is – you got the, the three-headed monsters on this team, LeBron, AD, um, and Russ, and um, I'm just here to be a sponge, and whatever they need me to do, I'm willing to do it. Um, I'm here to win. Um, I just seeing the, the trophies upstairs, and you know, I kid you not, I was sweating for the first 10 minutes of, of just looking at it, because you know, I'm very excited for this opportunity, and you know, um, I'm, I'm ready to, to fight for it to, to be a contender and just to win a championship. So um, I think at the end I'll be all, uh, I'm just here to play my part. You know, and I'm here to play my part the best that I can, control what I can control, and um, consistently just stay in the gym and let everything else speak for itself. Like, do you view yourself as a starter, someone comes off the bench, and which role suits you the best? I suit. Listen, I'm 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 adaptable, man. I'm I'm like a chameleon, man. I can change due to my environment. So, um, if it's coming off the bench, you know, and, and that seems like the that's the best fit, so be it. If it's a starter then so be it as well. Um, I would love to be a star, but that's not up to me. I'm just here to play ball at the end of the day. I'm here to win, um, and I'm here to get that chip. Lonnie, um, you've obviously never played with this level of star power and, and the attention that those guys are going to draw. Um, how do you prepare for like the, the looks you're going to get and just kind of maybe the shot quality of just being open, whereas maybe in San Antonio you, you didn't get those same opportunities? Um, I mean, just always being ready. I think, you know, of course, this is a lot different from San Antonio, but I got to play with a fairly great player as far as DeMar DeRozan, and that's someone that, that has really helped me kind of be a little bit more comfortable with this position. You know, um, there's times where, you know, he always found me, you know, or everyone's focusing on him. I'm on the corner, you know, he's passing or whatnot, and I'm ready to sh catch and shoot. So I know what, um, what I need to do, and I know what I got to continue to improve on. Um, so I'm just, I'm just ready for that, you know, once the clock really starts ticking. We'll take uh, Dan Wykey on Zoom. Hey, Lonnie. Dan Wykey with the LA Times. Um, you, I think you said in an interview once that it was kind of like you went to Popovich University. Yeah. For <laughs> college. I, I guess, what were, what were some of the lessons from that, that that you think have kind of prepared you for this next part of your career? And then, I guess, along those lines, what have been your initial impressions of Darvin Ham? Um, first of all, with Coach Pop, it's always been about professionalism, staying in the gym. Um, you know, and not making the game too complex, not too complicated. You know, with the Spurs, we live by three things, you know, 0.5 as far as catch and shoot, drive, or pass, you know, um, being as decisive, of it, being as, decisive as, as you can. So um, transitioning on to the Lakers, uh, I kind of carry those same models as far as professionalism, staying in the gym, and um, being decisive, ready to shoot, ready to pass, or um, ready to go for a layup. Dave, on Zoom. Lonnie, how's it going? David Brennan with ESPN. Uh, I wanted to know, coming in as a, kind of like the, the marquee signing for the Lakers the, this offseason, considering you know, all they had was the taxpayer mid-level to play with, is that, 
Is that any sort of benchmark uh, on your career thus far? Uh, the, the fact that you are the guy that, that they chose to, to use that contract structure with? Um, I haven't really thought of it in that way, but I would say uh, receiving that contract has been a blessing, and I'm ready to take full opportunity of it um, with this one year and just be the best person I can be on and off the court. Um, day in and day out, um, since I found out that I was going to be a Laker, you know, it, it kind of hit a whole nother level, um, knowing what what the team, what they want, you know, what Coach Ham wants. Um, and that's the, a championship at the end of the day, and that's how I'm, I'm going to carry myself um, day in and day out is just working, working my tail off until, you know, that time comes with the team and the season starts going up. So um, I'm just ready. I'm excited. You know, um, I still got a million things going into my head right now, a million emotions, you know. Um, I'm just truly blessed, humbled, and hungry to, you know, start a, start a new time with the Lakers, I guess you could say. Andy Kamenetsky on Zoom. You're on mute, Andy. Excuse me. I uh, apologize for that. You're still really young in your NBA career, only 23, and the Spurs are moving in a direction that feels like it's more towards a rebuild. Did you have any either expectations or, or thoughts that you might be a part of that, just being in an age range that it could still work, or was there something different that you wanted in your career that would lead you here? Um, I mean, for me, it, it's a lot different. I mean, all I know is the Spurs organization. So obviously going into the off season, you want, you probably want to go back with what you're comfortable with as far as going back with the Spurs. And um, that was something that I had my eye on at first. Um, but seeing, you know, the whole thing with DeJounte, you know, moving and, you know, them trying to restart and, you know, start fresh. Um, it kind of seemed like I wasn't a part of that uh, restart, refresh movement. Um, which is perfectly fine. Um, you know, I'm, I'm ready to continue to just better myself. You know, there's a lot of things that are out of my hand. You know, I can only control what I can. And um, God willingly and, you know, with good vibes and positivity, I'm with one of the best franchises in the, in the league. Uh, last two. Kyle? Um, you know, you've had some, some good shooting seasons uh, in your career. Last season, obviously, a little bit of a dip. What do you... Kind of identify in the off season about um, your shot that, that you're trying to work on because obviously this team needs you for spacing. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, last year, I mean, you can look at the percentages, but I kid you not, leave me open. We're gonna see what's happening. All right, so um, going into this season, I'm just day in and day out. I'm in I'm in the gym. I'm waking up at 6 a.m. to get my first workout, and then I'm back at 11 to get my second one, and in between, I'm lifting. So I'm getting about three workouts in and then before one o'clock. You know, I'm, I'm honing into what I got to get better on. And I'm not just strength, strengthening my weaknesses, but I'm strengthening my strength as well. So, um, you know, I'm ready to show everyone what I'm about. And last question, Mike Trudell with a follow up. Lonnie, so with the shooting, the ball wasn't going in before the break. After the break though, I think you were up to about 37% on, mm -hmm. the, on a high volume. Did you, was it anything like just when in, when out, was there an adjustment or anything with the shooting? Uh, no, I stayed in the gym. Yeah. That's simple. Um, everyone has their, not everyone, but you know, you have your ups and your downs. It's, it's how you bounce back from it. So um, after games, when I had bad games, I was in the gym afterwards. I would go straight to my facility to shoot um, before practices, after practices. Um, I stayed with it. You know, um, I knew sooner or later that worm was going to turn, and um, later down the road, it finally did. And then just want to follow up defensively. Yeah, uh, where? What type of player are you most comfortable guarding? You know, shooting guards, point guards, you slide up the wings if need be. How do you mm -hmm. see yourself? Uh, one through three. I mean, um, um, I don't I didn't gain a little bit more weight now. I'm around 215. So if I maybe have to guard the four, um, so be it. You know, I'm ready. I'm ready for the physicality. Um, you know, I've been preparing myself to just guard multiple positions and, and be mentally ready for that for that task.